it is I, Braggy, the Viking. As you can see, I've got a good specky home. And um, although I didn't have horns in the home at Mojang, but I am indeed a Viking. Now, today is another episode of gameplay on the channel. And you may be asking yourself, well, what are you doing today? Well, today we are going to go and lava cast the pyramid. A bit like this one, but a bit larger. Uh, I did start earlier, but um, a friend came to my door, so I had to um, stop live streaming. Well, I didn't stop live, I let it go on. What a mistake. But um, So what are you going to get out get of this video, you may be asking yourself. And you may be saying, well, what exactly braggy is Minecraft and what is lava casting? Well, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate and teach you how you could turn one bucket of lava into this sort of pyramid and build. It is called lava casting and it's a really, really good technique for building. And I've got a few things I can show you in a few episodes of gameplay on lava casting. So we're going to start again. We're going to go somewhere else. Uh, this pyramid will go down in history as a, um, you know, what I've made some time ago. So let's just fly forward and see what we find. And we're looking for a bit of ocean without too much, you know, land. Well, I think this would be ideal around here. So let's land over here. So bear with me. Oh, I'm trying to fly. I'm crashing to a wall. Of course, you could lava cast on any biome. I tend to like to lava cast on um, the sort of biomes are swamps because, let's face it, they're, they're fairly boring. Or sometimes tree biomes if I have the setting on, which means I don't burn the trees. So we're going to start here. Or actually, no, we're going to go to this next section. It'll be more in the middle. That makes perfect sense to me. But everything in life happened for a reason. Of course, the reason why I have no burning setting on is so that I keep the trees if I do a lava cast. So the first thing you do, and let's talk about what you need. You need a bed if you're going to be lava casting, really, because you need to have the ability to sleep at night to stop you getting attacked by those evil flying creatures, which nobody really likes. You need, of course, at least one bucket of lava and one bucket of water because you need a pickaxe to mine away the block, but you could do it with your fist and your hand. But um, I'm sophisticated, so I've got a pickaxe. You need some building blocks. So I like to use stone brick and I like to use dirt because I've always got lots of dirt to get rid of. And it kind of makes kind of perfect sense to uh, use dirt. You could use gravel, you could use sand, but sand is useful for glass and gravel not so useful unless you wanted some coarse dirt. So... Those are the central items. You could also do with some uh, gapples or enchanted golden apples if you have any. You could use, um, you know, golden carrots. I think I think you could use them. Just to if you got a, if you land in the lava, you got to have some way to get out that lava quick, and to get back on top of your, you know, lava cast. Which is why when you're doing it, you always crouch. So let's go ahead, and we'll start this little episode. And I hope you're going to find it entertaining. And I hope, you know, you're going to get something out of it. So the first block you put down, you just see it. I put a stone brick down. I put a piece of dirt down. And then another stone brick. And then I want to mine away the dirt. I don't need that in my life. I don't need it in this process. And then we're going to put lava down. And we'll change this for you so you can see the lava spread. Now on the previous lava cast, which... I don't think we can see in the distance because it's just too far away in the chunks. I did it straight from the ocean. This time I'm going to do it on top of a bit of a small hill, if you call it a hill. Yeah, so yeah, I would have thought I would have seen it from here, but no. So we've got to wait for the lava to develop and land in the ocean. Ah, nah, yeah, I could cheat. I could just put the water down now and go straight ahead. But I, I like to get the most out of the lava cast. Because the bigger it is, the more dramatic it is. And this is about making the landscape more interesting. And then at some point, I'm going to go along and convert some of these big lava casts into builds or maybe build a temple on top of them and do various really good tasks. And you may be asking yourself, well, you know, 
this is on the channel Northworthy uh, Sagas and Stories. Why are you doing Minecraft? Because, you know, I'm really enthusiastic about the medieval history and you know, the things I talk about on the channel. And quite often I can do, you know, very random talks and, and talk about many random things like I did in the live streams last night when I was going around blaming Keir Starmer for everything. Um, so it does relate in, in the sense, and um, I'll cover some of the subjects and topics I talked about earlier. So I need to get my inventory sorted. So let's just get a bucket of water down. And like I said, I did start a live stream earlier, but a friend was knocking at my door because I'm trying to get rid of my old car and he's very interested and I think it'll be a good car for him. And I could probably get a bit more money for my old uh, Vauxhall Vectra, but um, I wanted to go to a good home. And I met a guy called Steve who actually built the extension of the house I'm in right now. So what are the chances of that? So that's a small world. So we put the first lot of lava down. I put two bits of stone brick. So we're now going to get rid of the dirt and put more lava down. And the thing about lava casting is that often it's a waiting game. You've got to wait for the lava to get down, especially when you tend to get bigger and higher when it comes to lava cast because let's face it if you're lava casting and you're now at a height 150 high then your lava cast in theory is going to be about 350 blocks wide so they can be very very large and certainly on the old version of the game i have on a couple of occasions crashed the game and i think in a video i will demonstrate what happened I don't know whether in this version, uh, it's raining outside, lovely. I don't know in, with this version whether it will crash on the Xbox, you know, the towery big Xbox, the really good one. Maybe on the S it might crash, but certainly on the Xbox, um, you know, thingy bobber. I can't remember everything because my brain's going and I'm tired and I've not had no food today. So the lava's developed, it's landed on the floor, so we're going to put some more water down and then we're going to get rid of the water straight away. And you must wait for the water to go past this first block or if you risk losing your lava, it will turn into obsidian. And the reason why in the infantry I have at least two lots of lava and two lots of water is just in case that happens. Because, you know, you've got to go and get lava and water and it's a pain. So we're repeating the same process again. And so I think at some point I'm going to demonstrate how you could do a classical... 2b2t spawn tower because i made a few of them and they do convert into really nice towers because let's face it you know uh, if you want some really nice structures on your land and on your bit of minecraft you know you know um, landscape then lava casting is a very quick way of doing that and achieving that goal some people say oh they're really ugly and i don't like them some people will say well actually that's griefing well it's only griefing if you're doing it in the sense of griefing this is not an anarchy world, which is where I learnt to do lava casting. This is a survival world, so I do have rules and regulations, and I don't let many people in, as I've probably said before. But how does it relate to the Vikings? As you can see, I'm dressed as one, and I like to go around thinking in modern life I am a Viking. It's for some people, it's a bit of a strange concept. So just wait for the lava to go and settle down. This is why I like the change of view. Bear with me, there we go. And I think it's got to its limit. It's not quite nearly, nearly. We'll put the water down and then we're going to get rid of the water. Because that's, that's enough time to put water down. And I don't need to sleep yet. Probably in the next couple of days in the Minecraft world, I'll need to sleep. But for the meantime... Now we're going to carry on. Put some more lava down and we'll start the process all over again. Now I do know I have somebody watching. It could be my friend and brother Eric. He's one of my best friends in life and I love him to bits. Never be afraid to tell your friends that you love them because that just shows what a strong character you are. And I love my friends more than I love my own actual family because most of them are not very nice apart from two of my brothers and some nieces I have, the rest of them I don't really have time for. 
And as I often told to people, it's far better in life that, you know, you have five good friends than have 25 bad friends. So, you know, to, to be my friend in life, you've got to bring something to the table. And what, what that means is basically you need to have some benefit to my life and you need to be good and decent and not negative. Which is why I love the very few friends I do have because they're wonderful and brilliant people. So that's putting the lava down. So how to relate Minecraft and what we're doing to Viking, Anglo-Saxon and medieval life. Well, that, for a lot of people that would be a challenge. But for me, no, it's not. I, I think it relates a lot in many senses. Yeah, you know, fair enough. You know, there you were, old Olaf the Viking, living in Iceland, you know, 1,200 years ago, or maybe, you know, 1,100 years ago. You, you don't have an Xbox, do you? You know, your entertainment was people singing, telling stories. But what he did have was volcanoes. And if you lived in Iceland, you know, that land of ice and uh, fire, there would have been lava. But would a Viking have known what a volcano is? You know, I, I think about that. I've been thinking about it all last night. You know, what would a Viking think of a volcano? You know, and it, it reminds me of, because I recently on on Channel 4, a British broadcasting corporation, not the BBC, uh, because they're a little bit better than the BBC, even though Channel 4 can be a little bit woke in what they do. Um, I prefer Channel 4 than BBC, that what's the British bullshit corporation as i called it um so i watched very recently for the second time in my life the norseman movie the first time i watched it you know it was it was a little bit confusing you know at times and so it, it's one of those films which you need to watch a few times to get everything to understand everything about the film and so i watched it very recently for the second time in my life and I thought to myself, how impressive this film is. Could this be actually the best Viking movie that has ever been made? Oh no, I've got to get back into crouching or I need to kind of fall off the blocks then. It's all right in this stage, but when you put lava down and you fall into lava, uh, you need to deal with that quickly. And uh, I think at some point in the lava cast process, I will demonstrate what to do and how to get out of that. There's a few options. So it does make me think, you know, from a Viking point of view, what would they have thought about volcanoes? Because let's face it, you know, you're living in Iceland, you're living in a nice bit of a valley, and in the distance, you know, a few leagues away, or miles or kilometres in the modern world, uh, a league is an old measurement of distance compared to miles and compared to kilometres. It would make you think what they thought. And in the movie... The Norseman, when he goes and volunteers to be a slave, so he can be shipped to Iceland on a, on a long ship, and you know he's living in a small settlement, not a settlement, more of a farmstead with a few outbuildings, and I thought that was done really brilliantly. In the distance, you do see a volcano, and you know it's a volcano because a, it's got that classical volcano V shape which a lot of them do have. And secondly, you could see smoke rising from the top of it. So there you were. There's, you know, old, old Olaf, a good old traditional Viking name, or perhaps his name was Half Dan. It doesn't really matter. Um, so there he is. And he's living in Iceland. And he lives in a nice bit of a valley, you know. He's got coin, he's got money. He can afford to have a farmstead and most inappropriately probably got slaves because that was what medieval culture was about to a certain degree slavery was everywhere but at least in viking culture you had a chance to become a free man and go high in the world like a lot of cultures where that didn't really happen i suppose you could compare that to the gladiators when the gladiators you know have won so many fights you know in in the arenas or the Circus Maximus, you get awarded and given a wooden sword, which is a sign 
of your freedom. It's because you've become a legendary fighter and you killed a lot of people and you survived a lot of fights. And it does make me think, well, how does that kind of relate to the fact that in Saxon and Viking culture, when you were given a knife, like a sea axe, which is equivalent of a knife today, that represented your freedom and also represented your right to vote in the old thing with what you call the uh, weapon tack or the weapon take. This was basically where we get the idea of putting your hands in the air when you vote. And I can't really do that in Minecraft. Uh, but um, if I could, I would demonstrate that. So in those times, you would, you know, put your weapon in the air to say yay and your weapon down to say no when you was voting on some important thing to vote about. We've got a load of zombies down there and a creeper and um, some llamas who are about to get fried. And of course, the higher you go in these lava casts, the longer it takes. And literally, if you're on an old version of the Xbox, if you're on, you know, if you're on the Xbox S, I don't know whether it'll crash when you get to the point when your lava cast gets that big that like the game can't cope. I'll be, I'll be interested to test it on the Xbox I have, which is the best one you can get at the moment. So we've got to wait. So yeah, so I find that to be quite fascinating and it makes you think whether, you know, there's old Olaf the Viking and... Um, you know, he sees a volcano and it erupts with a loud bang, as they often do. And there's a bit of a shock wave. And then you see his lava coming down from the volcano. What would you think about it? You know, would he be daft enough to say, oh, I'm going to put my foot in that red thing and see what happens? I think you'll probably know and probably realise that that lava is extremely hot. And of course, I put my water in the wrong place there. So it's just very bad on me. So let's just correct that and put it on the right place. Well, so I'd have half, you know, cobblestone and the other half wouldn't be cobblestone. And we'll get rid of the water and wait for the water to just drop below this block here. Once it's below this block, you can carry on and mine away this block to get your lava back because you need to get this. And then we can start all over again. Because it's um, important to crouch, because you need to crouch, because basically you don't want to fall off this block. But I'm being very slow. Normally I'm, I'm pretty fast at doing this. But communicating and trying to be entertaining, which I do hope you find this video to be entertaining. And I know it's a bit of a different thing on the channel. But I'm so enthusiastic about medieval life and I'm so enthusiastic about history. I have just that same enthusiasm for Minecraft. It, I think yesterday in my first live stream, I said it was 13 years old. It's not. Minecraft, amazingly, is 15 years old. And I pretty much started playing when it first came on the Xbox as a trial and I played from that day onwards, and I had one world, didn't stay too long, and then I started this world, which was on Christmas Day, and it would have been either 2011 or 2012. So I think this world is either 12 years old or 13 years old. And, you know, as, as I often explain, people don't play the way I play. Most people will, will have a world... And they'll play in it for a few months, you know, invite a few friends and, you know, build a base. And then they get bored and they st stop playing or they say, oh, I'm going to start a new map. But I don't really see the point of that because why start a new world when you could just leave your base, take the most basic equipment you want or even nothing and go off somewhere else, find an island, find a mountain, find a nice tree area. And um, start all over again. Sorry, I was forgetting which button to press then. So just bear with me. There we go. So the lava's come down again. So this is going to be more of an ugly shape pyramid. 
then you get additional shape period because I'm building it on top of a small hill, if you can call it a hill. Maybe just an outcrop of dirt, maybe you could correctly call it. So we're going to get this lava. And the reason why you have spare lava is so that if you do accidentally put dirt in that little block and get rid of your lava, you've always got a bit more you can carry on with. So we'll put some lava down. Yes, my control batteries are getting low. It's been typical, isn't it? So we'll see how long we can carry on for. I think we've got at least a good half an hour. So we'll wait for the um, lava to cascade. There's a word for you. Down the cobblestone. And whilst I'm doing that, I'll look, see if I can find my spare battery. I know somewhere around here I do have one. But um, I live in a house with too many belongings. And some days uh, things end up getting lost for a while. <laughs> I live in a chaotic manner. But each to their own. So let's have a look at the lava. We'll go. We'll change the view. You can see the lava cascading down the uh, cobblestone, ugly pyramid, slowly covering up these two islands. Because let's face it, I don't really need those islands. I could always come back and mine away the sand if it's if we ever needed it, but I don't. Uh, there's enough sand to last a lifetime. And in the distance, you can see a bit of a temple I was building at one point in the past, and. That thing in the in the distance, that little blob of a cross, is probably where there's a ship in the ocean, which I've already gone and got the goods out of, which is why I built it on top of it, so I know. And there's a bit of lava over there, so oh yes, and we'll change the angle and see what this looks like. Not quite. At the end of it yet i like to maximize the amount of cobblestone i can generate in this process if i can because you know that kind of makes sense to me but what do you think of course if you have any thoughts any questions you'd like to ask whether it's related to minecraft or even related to medieval life let's say you know you're at school and you're studying the anglo-saxons even worse you're studying not that, the bad, not that the Saxons are bad, I like the Saxons, but let's say you're studying the Anglo-Normans and the Battle of Hastings. And uh, I blame Keir Starmer for us losing the Battle of Hastings and for Harold getting an arrow in his eye. It was Keir Starmer's fault, no doubt about it in my mind. A um, little joke. But um, you may be asking, you know, oh, perhaps I could ask a question to a medieval enthusiast about something to do with the normans or the saxons so again we're going to repeat the process we'll get the lava we'll put down another two pieces of stone brick my favorite block dirt another stone brick we'll crouch mine away the dirt put the lava down and start all over again you do have to be patient with this lava casting experience and of course so the bigger it gets the longer it takes for the lava to get to the bottom of course you can get halfway down the lava and put water on it will build little cliffs and make it more interesting in shape and style this is one of the things we can do in this episode i'm not going to do that we're going to do it the traditional way of letting it go all the way to the bottom because i could leave the other method for another video you do get some really fascinating and interesting shapes of course if you're looking for a base you could hollow this out now and make the inside of it your base and have a really cool looking base and a lot of people would go past a lava cast and not really think about it being a base so of course if you're trying to hide something let's say you built a base and you want to hide it 
good way to hide your base. Of course, if you're on an anarchy world, and I will demonstrate some anarchy gameplay in what uh, in my old realm, which I've got to reactivate at some point. We could also do that. It's a pity your mouth don't move with your Minecraft character when you're talking. So I look to fall off the edge, braggy. Because if you're new to the channel, you know, we like a history, we like a storytelling. But I just wanted to do something more mainstream. And because I'm trying to get back into the YouTube part of the program, I need 1800 hours of watch time. I think Minecraft could be one of the good ways of doing it. Certainly on my gaming channel, I got a, a Minecraft lava cast video. And it's had like, I think, 51,000 views, which is not bad, really for a gameplay video and it was so, it's so old like six years old the quality of it is nowhere near as good as this because on twitch the quality has vastly improved and that is good so again we will um, put the water down This is a really good thing to do. We'll change the view so you can see it. The lava being turned into cobblestone. And now we can get rid of the water. And we can repeat the old process. It is very repetitive. Now I did something a little bit bad there. I mined away too many blocks. We've got a super overpowered pickaxe. So I make sure you put them back. If you don't want your lava cache to be deformed. Not that there's nothing wrong with that. So again, lava down. We'll change angle and we'll wait for the lava to spread all the way down. All the way down to the bottom of the sea. Random song there for you. I think every Minecraft video needs a random bit of song. I do love singing and I do love music. Whether I'm a good singer is another question. Luckily, I have found a battery and um, we can carry on without the thought of um, not having no battery on your old set. Yes, it's not been really going planned today. As a, you know, I thought to myself last night, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do a lava cast live stream and, and, and that'll be really good. And my first one didn't work out because a, a friend of mine uh, came to my door and you can't be rude and ignore people. Um, so that one didn't really go to plan. This is why we started a second live stream. Again, we're putting more water down. But at least it means now i got a full battery nearly. And we can carry on making this lava cast. So we'll get rid of the water. Get rid of that block. We will take the lava up. And then this time I'm going to sleep, just so that I don't have none of those evil flying creatures. And I forgot the name. I, I do know the name, but somewhere in my brain I've just forgotten it. And it's stored away somewhere. And it's yet to come back to my mind. And then when I do remember, which will be at some point when I'm doing something completely random other than gaming, 
Yeah, uh, I will remember it again and it will stay in my mind. It's not the most important thing to know, so it doesn't really matter. Do you know what they call those evil flying creatures? Leave it in a comment. And don't forget, if you do enjoy this video, if you find it to be entertaining, which I hope I am, then please subscribe to the channel. And above all, share our videos. And we do have a lot of videos on the channel. If you like story-based content, and of course we've got a lot of comedy short videos as well. And we've got a lot of videos from the late and great Eggle Thorson, who was our channel host, who passed away last year. A lovely, lovely Viking and man who I miss deeply. But uh, at least I know he's having a good time in Valhalla whilst I send the text on my phone. And I'm quite looking forward at some point upgrading my phone and getting... I think I'm going to wait until the Google 10 phone comes out. I know a lot of people say, yeah, man, you know, the Google 9 phone is really, really good, man. Um, but I, I kind of think to myself, mm, I, I'm going to wait a bit longer. And, and um, when I've got the income and the money, I will upgrade and go for the Google 10 phone simply because I make content on YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google and it kind of makes sense to have their phone. And... I would normally have, well, I wouldn't normally have, I would try to have a camera on so you could actually see me in the corner of the video, but because I don't have a camera and I can't afford to go out and have a, have a camera, I just don't have the access to do that. And I know you can run your mobile through your PC on Twitch, which is a very complicated way of doing it. But of course, if anybody's willing and wants to help the channel out and buy a a camera for the Xbox, then I will show myself on camera and even go to the point I will dress as a Viking whilst live streaming because I think that would be pretty damn cool. But what do you think? Of course, we do have a PayPal donation link, but I don't like to tell and advertise it because I think whenever I see videos and they always say, you know, oh, I'm really struggling, man, you know, I can't make ends meet. I saw one the other day, actually. Um... I did an um noise then, trying to cut them out in the video. Uh, so I did it again. Oh, God, blimey. So I, saw, I watched a video the other day. It was by the Terrain Tutor, who is the guy that makes war game Terrain. And he put out like a three or four minute video basically saying he's in dire straits financially and he's about to lose his house and he was asking for help. Yeah, I, I, I didn't find that too cheesy in the same aspect that, yeah, the guy's in dire problems and if I, had, if I was a millionaire and had tons of money, I'd, I'd send him a few quid, but I'm not. So in that aspect, that's okay and I'm in that kind of same situation, probably not so dire and what his situation was because, you know, I'm struggling to make ends meet, I'm struggling at the moment to even feed myself and find the money to run my car, which kind of limits when I can go and see my girlfriend is really really lovely and has never played on a game like this before uh, so we do have a paypal donation link but i don't like to say that because i just find it a little bit cheesy it's when people really go out there on, on purpose to say it and i'm not i'm just mentioning it right now random you know so you can make make of it what you can and you will but um if some people really go out and really advertise it too much and i find that to be a bit wrong you know, if somebody really wants to help you, then they'll go out and look to see whether you got a donation link to help support your channel. And let's face it, you know, YouTube channels cost money to run. You know, if you want a decent camera, if you want decent lights, if you want a decent microphone, if you want a good computer to edit from, that all costs money. And you could literally spend, you know, £5,000 or $5,000 on equipment, but yet, it could take you two years or five years or ten years to even make that money back from YouTube. And some, some people, and no doubt lots of people, invest money on equipment because they're really passionate about what they do on YouTube and the content they make, but they never make that money back. It's not, you know, yeah, and we are lucky these days. You can do a lot of it um, through your phone. So, and it's got so much easier to do that compared to the old days where you know your phone was too slow and the cab wasn't good enough and the microphone wasn't good enough 
So you do have that ability to make content and there's never been such a great time as now when it comes to making videos. And especially when it comes to people that are over 40. That's, they're getting very, very popular and, and everybody seems to be jumping on it at the moment. Of course, next year the channel at North where we started with the stories I think will be eight years old or seven years old. I forget, we started in 2017, so it's going to be eight years old. Um, it's going to be nine years old maybe. No, it's going to be eight years old next year. I'm going to have to think about that. So again, we've got the lava back. We put some dirt down. We put our stone bricks down. Uh, the poor sheep over there is going to roast to death soon. But never mind. He shouldn't go around living around a lava cache, should he? And there's a, there's a white sheep and a black sheep. What a contrast in colours. So we'll wait again. And wait for the process of the lava coming down. Of course, if this goes horribly, horribly wrong, this live stream, then it's Keir Starmer's fault. You know, if you get a punch in your car, that's Keir Starmer's fault. If you, um, you know, go to a shop and you get short-changed by somebody, that is Keir Starmer's fault. Yeah. You know, if your mum and dad get divorced, that's plainly Keir Starmer's fault. And of course, if you're a kid and your parents are getting divorced, I imagine it's not a very nice thing to go through. And certainly that does affect children so it's sad you know i think at the moment you know in the uk i think about 60 percent or 66 percent of marriages fail in the first five years that's a scary number <coughs> especially with um somebody that's planning to get married in the future and i can't wait but um, my girlfriend is rather private with her life and don't like me talking about such things. So no more of that talk, Maggie. So how else can we relate Minecraft to the Vikings? Well, we have swords. The Vikings had swords. Some Vikings who went mining for gold and silver, but let's face it, the Vikings love silver. It doesn't just pop out of the ground, does it? You got to go and dig for it. They had pickaxes. They had some limited use of of of, of um, stone in the builds. More so in the countries when, like uh, Iceland and maybe in Scotland, you may build a croft, have a stone wall, and then build a wooden structure on top of it. Everybody has dirt. Dirt is so important for farming. Now the Vikings did not really have iron buckets but well, they did have iron cauldrons or what they would refer as as kettles the vikings had beds now the vikings did not have enchanted golden apples but they did have apples and apples in the medieval times were a lot smaller than today so they had them they had bows now, they didn't have bows with flame and unbreaking, punch two mending, power three and infinity. But they did have bows. Uh, they had spades. Most spades would not have a metal end. They'd be made of pure wood. And if you was very lucky, there may be a metal mounting at the end of your blade of your spade just to protect it. They did not have fireworks. They did not have arrows of slowness, but they did have arrows. The Vikings did not have uh, shulker boxes, but we did have chickens and we did have bread. Um, did, we, not sure about maps. Maps mm, probably not something they didn't really have too much of. The, the the concept of maps wasn't really around so much in those times. But they did have axes, and this axe is called Larry, named after my old Viking bodyguard who is a massive um, Call of Duty game player. So, again, the lava have settled at the bottom of the ocean. We can put some water on. We can now uh, get rid of the water. We can mine away this block. We can get the lava. And then we can start all over again. Like I said, the thing about lava casting 
is that it's very repetitive. You know, you may say to yourself, right, I got to 102 blocks high. That's enough for me to hollow out the inside and to, you know, build a base. You know, you could replace some of the cobblestone with glass and have windows. Or you could do all sorts of stuff like that with it. So it's not about griefing. It's about, for me, it's about having that extra element of build in my world. And that, therefore, generates history. And let's face it, I don't need these two crappy little islands in my life. Oh, the sun is setting, so it's time for the zombies to come out and play. And the uh, skelly bobs and the creepers and llamas. So have you heard about the new update coming later in the year? 1.22. My prediction when it comes to release date is that it's going to come out, I think, in December. That's my that's my guess. It's, it's September now. Next week is October, November. So two months. And then I think it's going to be the first week round about oh, maybe... The, I'll have to look at my calendar. So... Maybe the first week of December is my guess. And if I go to the calendar, bear with me. I will give you an actual date of when I think it's going to come out. I think it's going to come out on either the 4th of December, the Wednesday. Or possibly the 6th or the 7th of December. But what are your thoughts? When do you think the new Minecraft update? And do you know what's happening in it? Well... We are going to have a new biome. It's like a shady kind of a pale wood. I think it's called the pale wood or the pale oak wood. It's an oak tree, a two by two oak tree. And then there's this new entity, which is a bit like the Ents from Lord of the Rings. If you've ever seen that film. And then you, you don't die when you hit him. You got to mine away the heart block, which is in the trees, and then they disappear. But you could also mine it with a salt touch pickaxe, and then you could place it in your little base and have these tree creatures protect your base, I do believe. So I think that's quite cool. And of course, I'm very excited about getting what you call bundles, because... As somebody that has a world which is like, you know, 12, 13 years old, I've done a lot of gameplay. I've played an awful lot in this world. So therefore, I've got more chests of stuff than I could possibly ever find and use. So I'm hoping it's going to make storage a little bit easier and not so stressful. Because I certainly, as a player, I've had stress from the fact that, oh my god, you know, I've got so much stuff in my world, how do I cope? You know, you try to spend a few days tidying up and collecting all your stuff, it just never ends. And I know my mate Stormy always laughs at my world and the chaotic manner in which I store things. So, I think that's going to be a good update. I like the fact we're going to get this paley white wood, it looks rather cool. And it's very elvish, you know. It reminds me of the buildings in Riverdale, Rivendale, even, uh, in Lord of the Rings. Which I, I very recently watched the three Hobbit movies again. I've watched them quite a few times now. And I must say, I really do enjoy them. But I've never seen the extended versions of those movies. So we wait again for the lava to pop down. Of course, you, the first bit, which we're at now, is always a classical pyramid, and then it seems to stretch out when it gets to the next stage. As you can see, you know, it, it kind of stretches out two blocks instead of one block. Well, I don't know why that is. You know, I'm sure somebody out there really understands the mechanics of lava in Minecraft. No, it's a fly bothering me. Go away, fly! Of course, I'm looking forward to my dinner tonight. I'm going to have baked beans on toast with sausage, uh, buttered toast, 
and maybe grate some cheese on top. And if I've got a packet of crisps, I might just shoot a packet of crisps and put them on top of the cheese as extra texture. Well, that's my number one tip for baked beans on toast. Oh, I'm, I'm getting hungry now. I'm going now. I'm getting hungry. No, I'm not. I'm lying. I am hungry, but I'm not going. I'm staying until we finish this lava cask, or at least get a bit higher. But uh, imagine if we get all the way up to, what, 270 blocks high, then these lava casts will look just pretty damn amazing. So we're just waiting for the stage until the lava to... Now, I could put the water on down, but, you know, no, let's hold it. Let's put the water on down. We'll, we'll pray to the gods, the Viking gods, that um, by the time the water reaches the bottom, the lava has spread out enough. And then, again, we'll repeat the same process. But we are going to sleep in a bed. And, of course, the Vikings had beds, and they too slept in them. That's a random thought of the day. Random thought of the day. You know, you you may be there, you may be saying to yourself, well, yeah, I'm really enjoying this, but I really want to do it myself. I want to start my own gaming channel, but how do I do it? You know, I'm too nervous. I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared about talking on camera. I don't have the confidence. Well, it's about having a go. And there's no better way than doing it through Twitch because you can basically, as long as you've got access to a computer, a PC, a personal computer, always make me laugh, does that? Uh, it's from PC World. No, it's not, it's not actually. PC World are very expensive. But, if, you know, if you've got access to a computer, you can download your video on demand, is what they call them on Twitch. But you've got to have your settings to save your video on demand and you need to do it pretty quick like in the next seven days after your live stream you can basically you know upload that to your channel and then you can edit the beginning if you've got a bit of a gap at the beginning where you're not talking whilst the game's setting up on the youtube edit page uh, then you could upload that way and then you don't have to you know have a capture card or nothing like that because in the old days of gaming you know you needed a capture card you couldn't really do it through many ways um, I know Microsoft, they had a service, I, I forget what it was called now, it was called, um, it was like something, was it like bread, not bread, it was called, um, was it called Oven? No, it was called Oven. Uh, it had a really stupid name. And that ended. That'll come back to me in a bit when I don't need to know it. So you can see like in this area here, it's not quite formed because of the blocks we're doing it on and the same over here but again and the same over here it's, it's just going to give it that individualistic look which is what i like and then one day i'll be flying over here and i'll, I'll be able to say to myself oh yeah i remember when i did that in 2024 and i did it on a live stream and the live stream will be recorded forever and um, published and you'll be able to see this you know, Minecraft lava cast pyramid. That it makes you think, you know, it's who was the first person that came up with the idea of building a pyramid? Because you think about it, you know, you got pyramids in Africa, we've got pyramids in China and Asia, we've got pyramids in, you know, uh, South America, we've got some pyramids in North America. I'm not sure about Canada don't think they've got any pyramids. And there's allegedly a pyramid in, I think, in Bosnia, in Europe. There's none in the UK that are really, really old. But it makes you think, who came up with the idea? Because it's funny, isn't it, how across the whole world, people in the past have built pyramids. But it makes you think where the idea came from. You know, some people say, well, actually, it came from aliens. And they came down and told us what to do. Uh, a, a controversial conspiracy but it does make you think 
how we came about the first concept of building a pyramid and who came up with that concept you know was it a guy called fred who one day you know in in the neolithic time said uh, oh, you know, i'm gonna i'm gonna get some stone today and build a pyramid you know would what would you know what a pyramid is and of course pyramid is an old word certainly the egyptian knew that word as they in egyptian it wouldn't sound like english word pyramid but um, oh, mate, i just got rid of dirt and put dirt back how bad so again we're going to put lava down wait for the lava to spread do some more entertaining chat so um let's just go up here i'm going to take my armor off and we're going to rate my viking clothes and talk about this skin so this is the full viking outfit so the home it's good in the sense of it's a specky home so it's got like it, it looks like it's got glasses so that aspect very very good the fact that it's got horns not so good because the vikings didn't have them uh then let's have a look the boots are leather but then they got they look like they got iron bits around the top of the boots which is not so authentic yeah we do know they had you know they could wear strips of iron uh, on a leather formation uh i forget what they're called now it will come back to me later vanguard comes to mind but i think that's wrong so we knew we, we had them but that's more late viking and certainly vikings that uh work for the Ferengian guard in byzantium and then it looks like I'm wearing a green tunic which goes down to above my waist. So it's a little bit short for a Viking tunic. And then on what looks like to be my right shoulder, but it's shown on the left side, I've got an iron shoulder piece. Not authentic. I've got a beard. And the beard looks like it's got two plaques. Very authentic. Maybe the teeth were a bit too white. But let's face it. You know, didn't have toothbrushes in those days. You could get a branch and soften the branch end up and use that to brush your teeth. And can we look behind ourselves? No. It's funny how you can't look at your back. Oh, there you go. We can look at the back. So, I don't know what the stripes are on the arm. But again, that's just a part of the texture pack and this texture. So, overall, it's not bad for a skin and I've had this skin for a long time and I do like it and certainly when people see you then you know they know that you are Viking because it's the horns that give it away because you know a bit like artificial intelligence a lot of people associate Vikings with horned helmets yes they had them in the sense of decoration and for ceremonial uses which is a throwback to the Iron Age, when Iron Age helmets had metal horns on. But when it came to the practicality of having a horned helmet in battle, it is not very practical indeed or at all. Because when you've got your sword in your hand or your axe, you're going to catch it on your horned helmet. And it makes your helmet feel a bit lopsided and very awkward to wear. So, in that sense, not so good and as we do that we'll change the view put some water down get rid of the lovely blue water mine away this block get the lava put another stone brick down go up one dirt stone brick crouch and start all over again and i do hope that i'm you know explaining this process good enough for you because you know end of the day you know i want it to be you know i want you to understand what i'm doing and not say to yourself oh bloody old braggy i didn't understand anything you're doing in that video and i'm really really confused so i do hope you do understand what i'm doing of course the vikings never built pyramids the burial mounds now that's the thing but it's not exactly a pyramid is it 
Although, yes, on burial mounds, and what a burial mound is, is, you know, there you were in the old days, and some of them would use as tombs, and some of them were just used as a landmark to represent, you know, you as a culture. Some burial mounds do look pyramid in style. So I suppose in that sense, we could say that we did have the equivalent of pyramids in the United Kingdom. And certainly some burial mounds are quite, you know, pyramid shaped. And of course, a lot of it is just dirt and turf laid on top of each other. And some of them will have burial chambers inside of them and some don't. Because it's one of those mysteries of archaeology which they don't quite understand because we don't live 3,000 years ago. So we don't have the same mindset and the same thinking process like our ancestors did. So we'll wait for the lava to drop. Like I said, it's a laborious, boring task at times. And then when I'm doing this without live streaming, I can go away for a few minutes. As long as I've slept in the bed and I know I'm safe, I then come back. Especially when the lava casket is so big, it can take five, ten minutes for the lava to reach the bottom. So I can go and do a bit of tidying up, make a cup of tea. Being British, that's a very traditional thing to do. But if I go away now on this live stream and make a cup of tea for ten minutes and leave you there, you know, alone without no voiceover, oh, it'd be very, very rude. Of course, the sun's about to set again. And we'll wait for the lava to settle. We're not far away now. We're getting there. And I'm sorry that I've not published too much, too many, got that one. I'm sorry that I've not published too many videos on the channel recently. Uh, I'm... Oh, I said, oh, again then. Oh, I'm professional. Um, I did it again. Oh, God, blimey, why is it when I say, ah, I don't apologise for saying, ah, I say, ah, mm -mm, afterwards. I don't know. It must be human nature, you know. Plus, it's a very old word we just don't understand. But I apologise for the lack of content. But I keep putting out community posts, and if I get a chance in a little bit, I will put out another one. I've got some lined up to uh, share from my computer and of course you could always send me an email and submit your own pictures if you know if you, you let's say you you do viking reenacting and you know you got some funny pictures and you think to yourself oh, actually i'd love bragging to share one of these either to rate my viking gear or to uh, do a picture as a caption then please look for my email address which is uh you can use Andy Wright Holdings at hotmail.co.uk and send me your pictures to use, and I will use them as long as you know, you know there's no copyright issue. Which generally with pictures there isn't. Most pictures I use are from Creative Commons search. So again, it's night time, but uh, we're waiting for the lava to cascade. There's that lovely word again. So fall down the cobblestone. And we're at a height of 112 blocks. I don't think I've ever done a lava cache to the top of the height limit so far. And it does make you think whether the height limit's ever going to get extended at some point. Again, that would be really cool. But then again, so many people don't build up in the sky. You know, we've got all this lovely ground and land and forest and trees and desert and jungles and, and swamps and plains. But so many people neglect the sky. I think what we need in Minecraft is an update with kind of a sky land. I think that would really work and use up some of that empty sky element but not have it over the top because you don't want it everywhere but I think if you come across a biome and it was a sky block island biome I think that would be really really cool and of course the end has not really been updated since it came out so that's quite boring as well 
So, yeah, that definitely needs a big update, Mojang. So there's two big hints and tips for me, what you could be working on in the future. The end and a Skyblock Island biome. But what sort of biome would you like? I'm really impressed with what they did to the Never because the Never was quite boring. And I've got a very, very old Never. Like I said, it's 12, 13 years old. And in the old days, you could reset your Never because the ne because the Never was so small in the old days, you ran out of resources. So people used to reset it, but I never did that. I never reset my Never. So I've got a build in there which is 12 years old. A lot of it is made out of cobblestone because at the time that was one of the main sources of blocks I used to have. Oh, I've been on live for two hours. And I had my breakfast, lunch or dinner yet. And I can't wait to have some food in a bit. And then that's a lot. It's um, maybe even lucky. I will try to get this out tonight at about 8 o'clock or 9pm 9, 9 as a bonus video for people. Once I've done some work with artificial intelligence to come up with a good title. So again, the lava's got to the bottom just about. We're going to put some water on. We're going to take away the water. We're going to wait for the water to recede past the first two blocks, mine away this block, take away the lava, place down a stone brick and another stone brick and a piece of dirt and another stone brick. We're going to squat down so we don't fall off, mine away the dirt, put the lava down and wait again for the whole process to go through its bring it what it does. So I think in the next live stream, I'm going to continue with this lava cast. And let's see how high and how big we could actually get a lava cast. I reckon that will take anywhere between two and three to four hours. So it may be two videos. We'll see. But um, I think it'll be interesting to see how far we can get up and if we can get to height limit without crashing the game. But if that did happen, that would be rather cool because you're going to get a really interesting effect to your lava cast. And if I can't demonstrate that on a live stream when it actually happens, then I can certainly go and show you a lava cast in my world where that did happen. And then I got some other ideas for uh, live streams, which are going to relate to the Vikings. We're going to attempt to build a long ship. We're going to build a long house. We will build a Gruben house, which is a sunken floor long house. We will build a small farmstead. Perhaps we could build a little fort made of wood. We could build a a, a, a round house in theory. So there's lots of things we could do that relate to the medieval times so that A, you get two things out of it. You get to see some Minecraft gameplay. So if you're into Minecraft, that's brilliant. Um, and then for those that are not into Minecraft, you get some related talk whilst I'm gaming about medieval life. Because I think that would be quite fascinating. But of course, if you've got any suggestions, if you've got any ideas of what I could do in these live streams, then please leave a comment and leave your suggestions for me. Because, you know, having you guys and girls, let's not forget the ladies on the channel, you know, suggest things, it just makes for better content. I know my girlfriend is a bit dubious about doing minecraft gameplay on the channel but she doesn't kind of think it relates 
but um, I think it does because it relates to me as a content creator which is just as important as in, in her words it will make it confusing though but does it make it confusing and you know a lot of my viewers are new viewers and they're not old viewers so a lot of the guys and the girls that come to watch the channel well, I've never seen the channel before. And we do have a lot of videos. There's nearly 2,500 videos on this channel for you to browse through and to watch and to like and to share. So in that aspect, we've got a lot to go on with and we've got a lot for you guys you know, to get entertainment and to learn something because entertainment and learning should come hand in hand. Humour is so important, I couldn't quite say that, uh, when it comes to that sort of thing. So we'll get rid of this block, we'll get the lava, and we've nearly gone through a stack of um, stone brick. We'll put the dirt down, another stone brick, and then we will put down the lava and start all over again. I mean, some people I can understand that will not have the patience to do this to stand there for hours and hours building a lava cast and again we will also demonstrate different lava cast styles and methods you know from the staircase method to the tower method the staircase tower method I know a lot of different ways and methods of lava casting And, you know, and I hope you like our, my, not our, well, it is our, because there's more than one of us on the channel, technically, especially in the future. So I hope you do enjoy our enthusiasm and you do find it entertaining. Yes, it was quite cold last night in the United Kingdom, the land of Keir Starmer. Our new dictator. So I went and lit my log stove and warmed up the house a little bit. And I can notice as I'm sitting in this room I'm in, it's getting slightly chilly. As in cold, not as in hot food. But it makes you think, I'm thinking now, if you have a bowl of chili con carne, does that keep you warm? because it's hot food in a sense of heat from the food not for heat from heating the food yeah. I do a bit I do like a bit of chili con carne now and again you know get a naan bread with it and then you could use a naan bread as a spoon so you could all the lovely chili con carne sauces oh that's that's so nice so we now have the height of 116 blocks so Often I like to give things names in Minecraft and in life. But what should we call this pyramid? Please leave me your suggestions in the comments of what we should name this pyramid. And the best one, you know, who names and suggests the best name will win. And I will, as long as I've got no swear in it, because... Bojan don't like swearing on signs. I will create a sign at the top of it and the date and we will forever have that history on the world and you too can be part of that world process and a part of the history of what I like to call Redheim land. You know, Redheim. I've had a few names for this world but at the moment I'm going to call it Redheim as in Red Home. Heim means home in, in, in Norse. But let me know your suggestions on what I should call it. We'll put some more water down. Be careful you don't get washed off. If you go you know, too far down, you've got to swim back up again. It's a slightly annoying. Unbelievable. We'll get rid of the water. Wait for the water to drop down. We'll get the lava. Put down two blocks of stone brick another piece of dirt stone brick and that's the first stack of stone brick gone 
We all crouch, mine away the dirt with my hand, put down the lava and start all over it again. So I do hope you find this video to be entertaining. I'm at the point now where I need to go and get some food. I'm hungry. I'm a starving Viking. Oh yes, I am. Very, 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 very starving. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I do hope you find it entertaining. And please consider subscribing if you are new to the channel. And don't forget, if you are subscribed, make sure that you have stayed subscribed because YouTube can cancel your subscription if you don't watch people's content that does happen so it's time for me to say oliva dirty goodbye adios see you amigos and i will see you in the next video oh yes it's time to end the live stream it's time to end the live stream But I find the options. There we go. Stop the live stream. It's a goodbye from me.